Welcome to WR State College Laboratory Section Orientation. Science Laboratory is a place where students and teachers can perform scientific activities. However, hazardous substances and dangerous equipment do exist in nearly all laboratory settings. Corrosive and toxic chemicals may cause danger to the people inside the laboratory if not handled appropriately. The main objectives of Science Laboratory is first to provide a venue for the laboratory needs of students taking up science courses. Two, to provide a wide collection of laboratory equipment and supplies that are beneficial to students to fulfill various activities. And lastly, to assist in the conduct of experiments so as to apply their acquired knowledge in the classroom. General Rules Number one, the presence of the laboratory instructor is required in all laboratory sessions. Number two, students should act properly. Careless attitude, distracting others, sitting or leaning on the laboratory work tables, and other forms of disorderly behavior will not be tolerated. Number three, always wear the prescribed laboratory protective equipment in the laboratory. Number four, you should not touch any equipment or chemicals upon entering the laboratory. You need to wait for the instructions of your instructor. Number five, you are encouraged to ask questions, especially when in doubt regarding the procedures of experiments. Number five and six, no food or drinks are allowed inside the laboratory, and chemical storage and stock room are off limits. Number seven, if an accident occurs in the lab, even a minor one, let your instructor know right away, whether it's a cut, a spilled chemical, or burn. All accidents should be reported. Number eight, dispose of waste properly. Throw solid waste such as papers and matches in the designated trash can. Pour chemical waste into container provided by the lab in charge. Never drain solutions in the sink. Number 9. Identify the locations of emergency equipment, which include a fire extinguisher, eye wash fountain, safety shower, and first aid kit. Learn their proper use and never hesitate to use them if the need arises. Last but not the least, number 10. Check and clean the working area before leaving. Make sure that the materials barred are clean, complete, and in good condition before returning them. Leave the workplace clean and dry. Next is laboratory dress code. Wear a prescribed lab gown to protect you from spills and splashes. Use hairnet to confine long hair, especially when dealing with fire. Do not wear jewelry when performing experiments. Wear gloves, masks, and goggles appropriately. Laboratory guidelines. Laboratory guidelines for requesting, dispensing, returning, and replacing. For requesting, the assigned group member shall make the requisition for apparatus at least two days before the experiment. Failure to request on time means no issuance of apparatus. Additional requisition of materials will still be entertained but with the authorization of the instructor and the science laboratory in charge. For dispensing, First 15 minutes of the laboratory time, the assigned group member of each group will receive all the materials needed for the experiment from the laboratory in charge. Check if they are complete and in good condition. The group may request for replacement if there are items found damaged or stained. The assigned group member will sign a certifying form, logbook, that the materials are complete and in good condition. The assigned group member will distribute the materials to the rest of the groups. For returning, clean and return materials used to the monitoring group. Last 15 minutes of the laboratory period, the assigned group member of each group will inspect the returned materials. The assigned group member should refuse to clear a particular group if their materials are incomplete, unclean, and with stain and damage. For replacing, the students or instructors have the responsibility to replace any broken or damaged material. 
In case of breakages, the student's instructor should replace the damaged or broken materials within the same semester. It must be the same specification. Guidelines for Housekeeping and Handling Chemicals For housekeeping, keep the assigned station clean and free from materials that are not necessary for the experiments at all times. Promptly and appropriately clean up chemical spills. Ask your instructor for assistance. Use sodium bicarbonate to neutralize acid spills and boric acid for alkali spills. Immediately instruct everyone to turn off all the sources of flame and all the equipment that could be a source of spark if a flammable chemical is spilled. Do not leave broken glassware lying around. Never touch broken glass with bare hands and dispose of them in the designated disposal container. Ask your instructor for assistance. In chemical handling or handling chemical, consider all the chemicals in the laboratory corrosive and toxic. Do not attempt to touch, taste, or smell them unless given specific instruction by the instructor. Use the hand to waft vapors above containers towards the nose when testing for odors. Know in advance the hazards of the chemicals that you are going to use. Never return a used chemical back to its previous container. Seek instructions from instructor about the leftover. Removing reagent bottles from their dispensing area is not allowed. Cover all waste containers and reagent bottles when not in use. Use the fume hood whenever toxic gases are expected to evolve or when working with organic solvents. Do not use the mouth for suction. Use an aspirator to draw liquids into a pipe pit. Before leaving the laboratory, never forget to wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water. In heating substances, do not point the mouth of the test tube being heated to anyone. Do not leave a lit burner unattended. Constantly turn off the burner or hot plate when it is not in use. Do not look into the top of the container when it is being heated. Be cautious when touching objects that have been heated. Glass and most metals look cold even if they are hot. Never put hot glassware into cold water immediately. Instead, put it on a clean cloth for several minutes. Never heat flammable liquids over an open flame. For accidents and injuries, chemical spill on the skin and chemical splash and eyes. Liquid chemical spill on skin. Immediately downpour the spill area with running water for several minutes, at least 10 to 15 minutes. Brush off solid chemicals that spill on the skin before washing it thoroughly with water. Liquid chemicals spill into the eye. Promptly wash it in an eye wash fountain for 10 to 15 minutes. Use your thumb and index finger to open your eyes widely. Move your eyes up and down and sideways to flush out the chemical thoroughly. For electrical shock. Danger! If you suspect someone has received an electrical shock, you must ensure all power sources are isolated before you can treat the casualty. Response: To give your casualty the optimum chances of survival, you must quickly assess their levels of response. A rapid assessment will allow effective treatment to be administered and will allow for accurate information to be passed on to the ambulance service. Shout! If you are alone, call for help to help someone stay with you while assessing the airway and breathing of the casualty, while the other is calling and waiting for the emergency medical services or EMS. Breathing and circulation. For an unresponsive casualty, commence CPR. Burns. Exposure to electricity can cause burns to the skin, and in severe cases, internal organs. In such cases, the electricity may, for example, enter via hand and leave via feet, causing entry and exit burns. Other injuries. For conscious and unconscious casualties, may apply cool burns for a minimum of 10 minutes with a wet dressing after placing them in a recovery position. For fire accident, in case of a fire accident, using a fire extinguisher is a must. The four easy steps to remember are learning the pass system. P. Pull the pin at the top to break the thumper seal. A. Aim the extinguisher low, pointing the nozzle at the base of the fire. Do not aim at the flames themselves. S. Squeeze the handle to release the extinguishing agent. 
S. Sweep the extinguisher from side to side, continuing to aim at the base of the fire until it appears to be out. All accidents and injuries inside the laboratory should immediately be reported to the instructor and laboratory in charge. That's all for the laboratory orientation. Thank you. Do you have any questions for us?